Well, what a week since the last time I spoke to you. Between being away, feeling like crap, and more. But I'm here. It's Thursday. I'm back for another podcast. And by God, have I got a lot to talk about today. Welcome back to the Moor Army Podcast for another episode. Welcome back to this Thursday's edition of the podcast. The first time I've spoken to you in well over a week. Um, hope you're all doing well out there. Um, welcome back to the program for the first time in, what is it, nine, ten days since I put a podcast out. Um, hope you're out there again, once again, is doing very, very well. Welcome back. Um, got a lot to talk about today on the podcast, but... Before I do get into any more of the show today, I just want to send a big apology for no podcast over the last week or so, as uh, I have been extremely busy, and also, I've been feeling like shit. And this has been totally straight to the point, guys. So if I sound a bit groggy today, then uh, well, I'm not going to apologise, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've, since last Sunday, I've been feeling absolutely cream crackered, and that's the God's honest truth. <laughs> I haven't been feeling great. Um, I don't know what it is, but I've been feeling like like a, a lorry's ran over me. Not even not even sick, just really bad, fatigued and run down. But more on that shortly. And I got loads to talk about today in the podcast. My God, the world's been going fucking boogaloo since the last time I spoke to you. But anyway, yes. Thank you for all your messages over the last few days. People have been asking where the podcast has been. Um, I haven't really posted much on social media. Um, I posted a vlog, vlogs up until last Sunday, where I was starting to feel a bit like crap. But I've got uh, oh, bits and bobs to post out still. Cause I've got a vlog to post out from my birthday, which was last Saturday. Um, which we'll probably chat about that in just a minute. But anyway, before we go any more into the podcast today, I'll talk about the subjects on hand and what has been going on with me. Let's get into the, the housekeeping, as I like to call here on the podcast, right before we move any forward. Guys, if you're new to the Murray Army podcast, or you are a regular listener, obviously you probably know how to get in touch with the show by now, but if you don't know how to get in touch with the program here on the Murray Army podcast, you can get in touch with us by the following methods. First of all, the email, which is Podcast at yahoo.com. Also, the old trusty social media which first of all is Facebook, which is Moor Army YouTube channel on the Facebook. Please drop a like on the page, I would appreciate it. Um, also on Instagram, which is official, Matthew Moor on Instagram. You can contact me through there. Also I'm on Threads now. I know Threads, this new social media platform, Threads. Uh, you can follow me on our official Matthew Moor as well. And for all your merchandise, which I've just dropped some new merchandise, um, my podcast t-shirt actually arrived two days ago. I haven't even opened it from the packaging guy. That's how bloody crap I felt like the last few days. Um, I'm going to be wearing it on my holiday soon. Um, and I'll be posting photos of me wearing it on social media and stuff in the next couple of days. Um, for your merchandise for the Murami podcast, Murami YouTube channel, Lewis's new <laughs> t-shirt as well, which a lot of you <laughs> says you absolutely love it. Some of you have ordered it already. Um and all your uh, basically Moor Army Hub. We can check out all the old previous videos, social media posts. You can check out anything else. You can get merchandise, links to the podcasts, whatever you want to do there. MoorArmy.co.uk. Guys, I'm sitting here this morning. Well, heading towards lunchtime here today. Feeling like the last couple of days have just been pie me, and I haven't even seen much of the world. When I sit in here on Thursday recording this podcast and I have not stepped one toe outside my door since Sunday night. That's right, I've been in my home since Sunday night. I haven't stepped foot outside my door since Sunday night. I have been physically drained. I don't know what it is. I just want to sleep the clock round. 
I'm not feeling sick or fickle like that. I'm just feeling really fatigued, really tired, really run down, beaten up, sore, just... And before anybody out there who doesn't like me starts saying, like, oh, he's probably had fucking COVID and he's locked himself. He's out there spreading COVID around everybody because I, I put a thing up. Um, I was talking to someone the other day on social media and stuff and I replied to someone and somebody saw it and they wrote me a message saying, oh, you must have COVID. You must be set to stay in the house for... And I'm like, fuck off, will you? Clown. I'm got COVID. Um, I'll tell you a story, guys. What happened was, I didn't do a podcast last Thursday because I was so busy last Thursday. I couldn't even get an hour even to sit down. And then when I finally got to sit down last Thursday night, it was too late to record a podcast. And then I sat and had a beer on Thursday night and I kicked myself and thought, I haven't even had a chance to record a podcast today. I feel like shit. And I went and I got up on Friday morning. And Lewis and I were off for the weekend. You probably saw some of the vlogs over the weekend, which you'll probably see another one popping up on the on the YouTube channel today. Um, we went off to Port Stewart, Coleraine, Port Rush over the weekend there because we're away with the football team. And we were um at Port Stewart on the Friday night. We were at Coleraine's ground on the Saturday, and also we were in Port Rush on Saturday evening afterwards and then we come home on Sunday um great trip first of all I want to say thank you to the ones from Coleraine and Port Stewart for the people who were at the, at the matches who come up to us um come and said hello said they love the videos met an interest a real interesting uh, older man at the Coleraine game he actually came up to me at the TV gallery and said hello and said he watched the videos and he enjoys the podcast and you know he he, he Said he was, you know, it was great to see the, the job that I'd done bringing up Brooke and Lewis, which I thought was really, really kind of him to do that. Um, met some younger fans on Friday night. I uh, actually met fans outside the Cool Rain ground on Saturday, plus met younger fans as well on the Friday night at Port Stewart, which was great. So anybody who came up for a picture or wanted to talk or whatever, guys, I appreciate it. It means a lot. Um, overall, it was a great weekend away. Um, got to spend some time with friends as well, which was even better. Um, we then on Saturday after football went down to Port Rush, which I have filmed part of a vlog for guys, part of my birthday video. Um, because this past Saturday was my birthday, and a lot of you guys out there have been contacting me over the last couple of days about my birthday and stuff, and wishing me a happy birthday. And it was great to hear from so many people, and I got a nice wee surprise, which you'll see in the vlog coming up. Fucking bastards! That football team of ours. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know particular, in particular one of the coaches is actually probably listening to the podcast because he always fucking does <laughs> fucking idiot yeah the, the club arranged after the cool rain game well I turned up at the ground Saturday with Lewis and obviously some of the players who were playing on the Friday night weren't playing on the Saturday game some did some didn't um, but they were sitting inside the pitch and I turned up and obviously they all knew it was my birthday through social media and through people talking at the club and whatever and they were like, oh, happy birthday, big man. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Oh, cheers, thanks, lads. Appreciate it. Well, one of our coaches, fucking big bastard he is. He says, I'll see you after the game. I said, right, okay, no problem. So I was just, when the game was over, I was about to interview the manager and stuff and waiting for him to come out of the dressing room and stuff. And uh, next minute I got one of the, the coaches stuck his head at the door and says, Matty, come here, big man. And I says, what is it? Fucking Lewis switches the camera on, follows me behind into the dressing room. And they all proceeded to start singing happy birthday to me. And they handed me this wee small, tiny cake. You, you see the video on my Instagram, guys? It's fucking brilliant. Unbelievable. Um, This wee small birthday cake with things. Because one of the boys in Belfast who couldn't make it to the game texts the boys and says, pick up something for Manny for his birthday. <laughs> it's like, right, okay. So the whole fucking dressing room was singing happy birthday and... Oh, it was nice. I, I I appreciated it, like you know, because at the end of the day, guys, you know, I've been working in Irish League football what thirteen years now, and I've never once had anything like that done before. And it was nice. It was it was a nice wee touch, and I actually appreciated it because the camaraderie. Uh, the, what's that word I'm looking for? The camaraderie, the camaraderie, or whatever it was, the, the the atmosphere and the the bond that we have in our dressing room now, and the connection that I have with the dressing room with the boys as well. You know. All these new faces coming into the club. It's like a whole big change around the club in the last few months. It's just been brilliant. 
since the new manager came in there in October. No disrespect to previous managers and we got there, but just at this minute in time, the the atmosphere around our club at the minute is is, is fantastic, and the, the the staff are brilliant, and the, the the players are so you know so great to be around. All of them, even the older heads, have been there a while too as well. It's been great to be around them all. And, <clears throat> when I walked in that dressing room on Saturday and the fuckers surprised me with the birthday, I was like, you fucking sons of bitches. But it was a nice wee touch and I, I do appreciate it a lot. And, you know, it was it was awful nice and to do. It. And I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you guys if you're listening. I know some of you do. Cheers for that. I do appreciate it. it means a lot. So it does. And it actually brightened up my day because um, I was feeling a bit tired and groggy and stuff from whatever else. So... But no, it was good. It was it was nice for them. And then on Saturday night, me and Lewis went out with a couple of friends down to the uh, Port Rush. Went down to the new Curries, it's called now instead of Barry's, but it used to be the art, uh, big place that everybody goes there in Port Rush. And we had ice cream and walked around the town and and just had a bit of fun. And that was good. I enjoyed it. It was a good trip, and we got to spend time with a, a friend of ours, and it was brilliant. We had a really, really good time. And then we come home on Sunday night. And then when I come home on Sunday night, I ended up being taken out for dinner for my birthday, last minute, which was brilliant. Um, went out for a lovely meal. But then when I come back on the way home on the train, I kept saying to Lewis, you know, Lewis, I feel like shit. I'm not sick. I'm just really, really, really tired. And he was saying like that. What's wrong? I mean, you, 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 you read it a reasonable you are and stuff. And I was like, I know, but just feel really tired and fatigued and just run down and just burnt out. And he was like, okay, Dad, no problem. So I'll just go home and get, get an early night. But then obviously I got surprised and taken out from a dinner for my birthday and stuff, which I went and had a great time. But when I come back home on Sunday night, I just felt so so tired i mean guys like honestly again as i said i wasn't feeling sick or i wasn't feeling like i had a flu or any bug or anything like that. i just felt physically drained and i mean drained so i went to bed monday night got up monday night just didn't feel all day monday i just felt like crap just run down tired just didn't feel myself just felt like shit so I thought, right, I'll just take Monday and I'll just switch off and I'll just I'll just sleep. So I tried to, and, I, I, and honestly, guys, from Monday to Tuesday, even yesterday, all I've been doing the last couple of days is sleep and just struggle to keep awake. Every day, I'm just feeling really, really fatigued really tired, just, I was talking to mum the other day on the phone, she's like, no wonder you're fucking tired, you know, you don't really sleep much, and you're travelling all the time, and you're up and about, and then you were in London last weekend, all travelling, God knows how much sleep you got there, then you're coming home, and you're running up and down the road with that football team, and you're working fucking all the jobs that you work, and you're doing all this stuff, and you're out doing all that, and you're not getting much sleep, and then the next minute you're about, she says, you're fucking burnt out, and I went, mm, I'm alright, I'm used to it. And then mum reminded me, like, you're not fucking 20 but anymore, you're 42, you have to calm down a bit, and mum, I'm only 42. And she's like, I know, but you know what mums are like, they fucking go on forever, like, but no offence mum. But just this last couple of days, even this, even today as I'm sitting here recording this podcast now, I'm still not feeling 100%, but I'm feeling a wee bit better today, to be honest with you, but all I've done is sleep. Like, literally, Sleep. And rest, and as I said to start this podcast, I haven't even hardly walked it. I haven't walked it, the door. Sorry, apart from what out the side of the house wants to put a bin in, a bag in the bin. I have not stepped out of my house since Sunday night, and this is Thursday. I haven't sold the light of day. It, it's just been, and even even I haven't even shaved. I haven't. I mean, at, at this moment in time when I'm recording this podcast, I look like I've been on a four-day fucking bender with the boys on a stag party or something like that, but I haven't. I've just been fatigued and run down and exhausted. I mean, there was even last night. I was in bed early last night and I was watching TV and stuff and, you know, just lying there and Lewis came in and sat in the bed and said, you all right, Dad? And we're, yeah, I'm just flicking through the TV here and stuff. And I was just sitting there and 
me and Lewis were talking away and we started watching something on TV and we were laughing and joking about it. And then literally within about five minutes, Lewis told me when it actually I woke back up again. He turned around and was fucking sleeping. I was out cold. And <laughs> when I woke up a couple of hours later, Lewis was in his bed watching TV and I came in to tell him to turn his TV and stuff off and he goes, well, you're awake, Dad, he says. I says, what? And he goes, you fell asleep. I was talking to you for five minutes and then you fucking passed out on me. So I, I, I don't know what it is, guys, but just this last lot of days, I've been feeling really tired, burnt out, fatigued. I don't know what it is. You know, and today's supposed to be a happy day for me because today's Thursday. It's fucking beer day for me. You all know we listen to this podcast. It's beer day. And I'm normally out and about on a Thursday, scooting about and working in the morning, finishing up for the day, coming in, getting the house all cleaned and getting everything ready for the next day because you know I'm having a couple of beers and that's the summertime so I'm normally up and about thinking right, we'll have to get a birdie tomorrow morning because the kids are not at school anymore. I'll have a few beers to stay in, I'll stay up a wee bit extra hour or two and then go to bed and get up the next day and I'll be fine. But today, I don't know how I'm going to feel in a couple of hours from now guys but at the minute I've had three cups of coffee today and I still feel... And look like I've been run over by a fucking bulldozer. But what I'm going to do is after record the podcast today, I'm going to get up and go for a nice walk to the shops because the shops have been shut for the last couple of days because of the whole parades over the 11th and 12th July parades here in Northern Ireland, um, which has been going on. The shops have been shut and stuff. So I want to get up and get myself a shave and a shower and try and get myself back up and just, I don't know what it is. Like, if you saw me right now, you know me guys in the podcast, or from the YouTube videos, I'm always clean, the head's always shaved, and I'm, you know, I've got a, either a wee goatee beard, or a bit of a stubble, or a clean shave, whatever, at the moment I'm sitting here with a beard, and fucking head full of hair, looks like a microphone, I just I haven't got the energy, but here's hoping it picks up, in front of you COVID freaks out there, no, I don't have COVID, no, I don't have COVID, and before you ask, no, I didn't do a test. I still got a lot of the old COVID fanatics contacting me here in the podcast. Going on about me speaking about COVID and all and calling me a fucking whatever else to call me. I couldn't give a shit. But apart from that, guys, it's been fun. I've had a great had a great weekend away. And here's the thing. Brooke went away on her first trip away, well, mini stroke holiday, without her, her dad and her brother. She went away to the caravan with Paul on Monday, and I haven't seen her since. And she's home today, actually. So hopefully she's back in one piece. But for what she's been sending me, photographs and stuff and everything else, she's had a great time. She was the other day going through a maze, one of them big giant mazes you go through. She's had fire pits and barbecues, and she's had a great time. And it's been weird not having her. I haven't really seen her much in two weeks, to be honest with you. But she's home today, and I'm looking forward to seeing her. Because I haven't seen her since Monday. And every time I've spoken to her, she's been telling me, Dad, stay in bed, sleep, rest. She even said to me, was it Tuesday afternoon, I think it was, I spoke to her. She says, Dad, you're burnt out. You're constantly on the go all the time. You're not sleeping enough. You're burnt out. And that was always my problem for years, guys. And I think it's starting to catch up with me now. So it's my own fault as well, though, because I mean, the last year, year and a half or so, has been an absolute shit, shit show for me. And we've talked about it here on the podcast. I've talked about it on my YouTube channel. I've had a lot of personal stuff going on over the last year or so. And it's just been crap. You know? But I think that, that last trip away at the weekend there on Sunday night just hit home for me and made me realize that's it. I am I am my 40s, I need to change my diet, I need to change my ways of life, I need to sleep more at night, get at least 8 hours sleep a night, I need to exercise more and I need to look after my body more because I think it's now guys the time where my body's just going, Matthew, you're not 21 anymore, you can't work 10, 12, 14 hour days, just live on 4 or 5 hours kip and do it all over again like I used to, even when I first became a parent, more so whenever Lewis was born pacing the floors at the same 4 o'clock in the morning with baby with colic while you're only getting 2 hours sleep and going and working a 14 hour shift the next day can't do that no more I sound like an old man but when your body gets to a certain age you need to start looking after yourself more because if you don't your body breaks down and I think that's my body now giving me a wake up call so 
I think I'm a good night's sleep every night. And here's the thing. People have told me in the past to do this, and I've never fucking listened. More so lately in the last couple of years, whenever I was with Sandra, she always used to go on to me about it and say, you know, Matthew, you're not sleeping enough. You're an idol. You don't go to sleep enough. You need, to, you need to sleep more. You need to get up more and exercise more and sleep more. And, you know, you don't sleep as much, much as you should do. Because she used to go to bed at like 10 o'clock at night sometimes. And, I used to laugh at her, but then there was nights, obviously, we had our nights up where we sat up most of the night laughing and joking and having a bit of fun and crack and whatever. But then she always used to say to me, Matthew, you know, you need to sleep more. And I never listened. I never fucking listened. I'm the first to admit that. Um, other people, not even just her, friends of mine used to say too, big man, you need to sleep. You, you, <laughs> your body only takes so much. And I think now in the last year or so, it's starting to take its toll now, so... But I love me rambling on about me feeling like shit. I hope you've all had a good week since the last time I spoke to you. <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody for the birthday messages once again too. Um, over the weekend. You know, a lot of these were wishing me happy birthday. I really do appreciate it. Um, I got some messages I want to read out today from you guys. I got a lot of messages from you guys today. Uh, about different things that's going on in the world today. Now, what else have we got in the podcast today? Obviously, we've got the Jackass of the Week, which is coming back today. Oh, we've got a lot of big stories to talk about today. Dear God Almighty, what has been going on <laughs> since the last time I spoke to you? My inbox has been flooding with messages about what's been going on over the last couple of days in relation to... Most importantly, the BBC. A lot of you, I mean, I mean, my fucking inbox. Just to, once this story broke last week, my inbox and, and Instagram or message requests on Instagram, Facebook messages and the email just went right down. All these messages. What do you think about this? Who do you think it is? What do you think it's going to be? You know, another BBC cover up, blah, 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 blah. All this here. Got loads to talk about today. I'm going to go into the main story first of all in this podcast today, which is being the one that you are all asking for my opinion on, which is the BBC, the latest BBC scandal. Now, for the last couple of days, it's been going around that a top BBC presenter was apparently up to no good. No surprise in the BBC, because they're always up to it. They're all fucking up to it. Even at ITV, they're all up to it as well, like Philip Schofield with his young boyfriend and... All these fucking scandals you see going on. But most importantly, our little friends at the BBC. And here we go. I'm going to start talking about this. And I can guarantee you now, by the time this podcast comes out today, I will have all the BBC lovies, all the little left-wing fucking creepy fucking supporters will be coming in and slit my inbox. And I hope you do, because you know something? I will laugh at every one of you, because this is my opinion. And on my podcast, I can say whatever the fuck I want. Anyway... All these rumours were flying around the last couple of days about this scandal, about this presenter apparently was paying this young 17-year-old child, and I use that term, phrase, child. I have a 17-year-old child, and I know if it was my child, this presenter would be fucking drop-kicked right across BBC uh, head, or their head office headquarters for doing this to my child. I would kick, it, I would kick their fucking ass and take them for every penny that they've got. Um, apparently they were paying them for explicit images of the sexual nature. And also, more. Then as the days went on, people were starting to wonder who it was. Then another allegation came out that apparently it was now another individual was making allegations against this person. And then another person came out as well. So all this was going on for days and days and days, guys. And as you know, I haven't been on the air the last couple of days. And maybe it should have been on the air. Obviously, again, with not being well and stuff, there's nothing I can do about that. But a lot of you were on at me about this. Saying, Matthew, you got to speak about this. The BBC, oh, so many of you were sending me messages. Who's it going to be? All these wee memes you were sending me, pictures and all these wee jokes and stuff about who's it going to be and you know which one, what presenters are going to be. Is it going to be this one? Is it going to be that one? You know, and our Jimmy Savile cover up. You know, what the hell's going on? The dirty bastards fucking going after kids. And then yesterday they announced who it was, but just before I heard that, they, apparently they were breaking the... The, the, the lockdown rules during COVID, which the BBC were fucking pursuing on our TV screens every day in early 2021 about staying away from people and don't go near people and only be a certain group of people and all this COVID shite they were feeding to us by this presenter 
was apparently breaking the rules. And even this person was even one of the ones who was telling us to stay at fucking home. Guys, I've been saying this for a long time. If you're up the mischief in this world, you will always be found out. No matter what it is, whether you're still here or you're dead or whatever, that'll always come out in the end. And this person from the BBC was one of the ones who used to sit on our TV screens every fucking night and spill all this crap while they were breaking the rules themselves. Been saying it for a long time. What goes around comes around. So yesterday, it was announced who this person was. And the fact that the, the person's wife came out and made this statement. And <laughs> I have my view on what I'm going to say to it now. But the person who was uh, accused of all this, and apparently it was true, was BBC news reporter. Yes, the main reporter of the BBC, the person who you see sitting there reading the news at 6 and 10 o'clock every fucking night, Hugh Edwards. That's right, the guy who you see who made the announcement about all these things that have been going on in the world in the last lot of years, massive moments like the Queen's death, King Charles' coronation, uh, COVID, all the stuff been going on. This guy's been part of the BBC for a long time and all along, during behind the scenes, uh, this person was allegedly paying this child at 17 £35,000 for sexually explicit pictures. Now, this is the thing that gets on my tits. Okay? There was a statement made by his wife saying that apparently it's all down to mental health issues. Now, here's the thing. Remember a few weeks ago we were talking about the Philip Schofield scandal when it came out and we are all saying, oh, Philip's struggling with mental health. And he wasn't struggling with fucking mental health when he was connected with some wee young lad, was he? And now they're saying that this, this Hugh Edwards person now is in a hospital receiving treatment for mental health. Now, guys, you know my view on mental health. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm probably going to get fucking slated for this and I really don't give a shit. At the end of the day, if you're sending, if you're asking a 17-year-old child for images of a sexual nature and willing to pay them money to see it, mental health issues or not, that's fucking sick. In my opinion, it's sick. 17-year-old child, not an adult, a child. And they're saying... Oh, there's an outpour of support now, and the police have determined for me. Uh, there's no criminal offence and all here. I'm sorry. If some man, grown ass man, is texting my daughter and saying to her, "Oh, show us, show us your private parts, and I'll give you money for it," I'm so sorry. <laughs> Say what you want. I'd kick the son of a bitch's ass and shove the phone down his fucking throat. 17 year old child and a grown ass man like that is asking for images of a sexual nature and also sending threatening messages towards another person saying to them you know try to make them feel afraid and scared and you know it, it just it baffles me and I was just reading before I come on the air today that sources are now saying that, that Hugh Edwards has not resigned from the BBC so are they going to put him back on fucking TV again? This is my point. And a lot of you have been contacting me about this. And, and a couple of messages in particular stood up in my head. You were all sending me like, you know, oh, you slobber about the BBC so much. And you don't like the BBC. But you were on the BBC during your, your, your viral video and on YouTube. And during all this stuff. And you've done interviews for Radio Wall Street. Yeah, because they fucking contacted me. The time of the viral video, it wasn't just BBC that I was on, guys. I was on multiple, multiple news channels that time. Multiple. I know people who work in the fucking BBC who do not like the corporation and are only there for a fucking paycheck. I've seen people who I knew before they worked in the BBC were lovely people. But as soon as they get in there, just like that, they don't want to know you anymore. You're nothing to them anymore. You're scum. 
years ago, years and years and years ago, I was offered an opportunity by someone who I knew, which will remain nameless, to apply for an opportunity to be a cameraman at the BBC. And do you think I would have done that? Not a chance. Not a fucking mission. You know my views on the BBC, guys. And I'm sorry, but as a parent, if I had a seven, I have, I have got a 17-year-old daughter, and if some old man no, claiming now that he has mental health problems, no, you must have mental health problems if you're fucking texting a 17-year-old, asking to see photographs of her private parts, and asking for that, and willing to pay money, 35 grand, to a child to show it. That's fucking sick. That is disgusting. I'm sorry. People may think, oh, but he's got mental health problems, no, blah, blah, blah. What the fuck was going on in the head, in the head of the likes of Jimmy Savile? When he was, like, abusing all these wee young girls in Top of the Pops, BBC, by the way. All these different things that he was doing, going into them in girls' homes and stuff like that, and molesting them girls and raping them girls. No, the, well, mental health problems? No. Sick, twisted bastard, more like it. But the fact now that another BBC person is now coming out again, more scandal, more crap. This is two now we've had in as many weeks. Philip Schofield a few weeks ago about this thing with his boy, and now he's like, oh, I've got mental health problems, I'm so... If the, this is my view of it, guys, and I struggled with my mental health, and I do get my bad day still to this day. And this annoys me, because my mental health was so bad 10 years ago, I was, was never, never, not even here anymore, I was nearly dead. And at the end of the day, if you're struggling, I always encourage on this podcast as well, if you have mental health problems, you have anybody at all, like that young gentleman I had the other week there, remember he, he texted me a bit before saying he was inside for, in jail for a while and he's come out and he has mental health problems, he's going to see a counsellor and he's going to see this and going to do that and change his life. And i actually been speaking to that young lad again recently. And if you're struggling with mental health problems, go, go, and get, go and get the help you need. Go and speak to a doctor, go and speak to a specialist, go and speak to your family, go and speak to someone. If you're struggling, speak to someone. Talk up, speak up, but don't go around fucking texting wee girls at 17 and asking for photographs of their private parts and then as soon as you get caught, you play the mental health card and cry. I'm sorry. A lot of these are going to disagree with what I have to say, but I have a daughter at 17. And if anybody was texting my daughter 17, a man of his age as well, and asking for photographs of that there, I'm sorry. I'd go to fucking jail. I'd whip his ass. I'm sorry, I wouldn't put up with that shit. BBC presenter or not, I'd be straight to their headquarters saying, excuse me, uh, are you having a fucking Jimmy Giraffe? Like the parent of this child uh, over the last couple of days uh, come out as well and said every time they saw Hugh Edwards on TV, they felt sick how the person was still on TV. And it took the BBC seven fucking weeks to address this matter. Seven weeks? I'm sorry. If you want to be known as a well, well-renowned, well-respected broadcaster, um, as soon as you find it that day, boom, deal with it that day. None of this, oh, we'll do the investigation and we'll do an internal investigation, which means he's going to get smacked in the wrist and nothing done about it. I'm sorry. Bullshit. I always call bullshit out in this podcast, and you know that. And at the end of the day, if, if people don't agree with me on this here, I couldn't give a shit. When I heard this here, this oh, this man has been texting a 17-year-old child and asking for images of an explicit level, I just thought, what a sick bastard. And paying the child money? And now the fact that he said he's not even resigned. <laughs> and apparently there's people out there who are supporting this. No offence has been committed, apparently. It just... Oh. It's the fact that the Metropolitan Police concluded that there was no criminal criminality took place in the ca- in the case a few hours. It's horrifying without any evidence, evidence um, saying that he was... I don't even want to read any more about it, guys. I'm just sitting here looking through the report I have put in front of me this morning here. It's just... It's unbelievable. It... it, it People are going to say to me, oh, but, you know, he had mental health problems. He didn't know what he was doing and blah, 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 blah. This is my view on it. And if you don't like what I have to say about it, then fucking switch this podcast off now. Just switch it off and and never listen to this podcast again. I have a 17-year-old daughter. And 
if anybody, and if they have mental health problems, you should have had it sorted. But the fact that they're coming at my child, 17, asking for that is disgusting and should be dealt with. If he has mental health problems, get them sorted. He said they said now he's getting mental health problems out there. He's getting anything sorted out. No, that's fine. But at the end of the day, the thing that pissed me off the most was BBC, seven fucking weeks. Seven weeks. Typical. Typical. Guys, I want to hear your more your thoughts on it because a lot of you have been contacting me over this the last couple of days. You know, more army podcast at yahoo.com and contact me on social media, but I really appreciate it. It just, I'm sorry. And the fact that uh, this afternoon here before I push record here, your man, Tim Divvy, he's normal one too. That our fucking clown, Tim Divvy at the BBC. He's normal moron too. Um, there's been a statement put out by him. Uh... I'm just going to pull it up here and how we read about when I'm talking to you here. Uh, there we go. It just says here, the last few days has been obviously tar- uh, upsetting for him, uh, t- uh, Hugh Everett and his family. And you know, there's a full investigation going on within, inside the BBC. And I want to show you that our immediate concerns are Judy of Kerr to all involved. Judy and Kerr, BBC, what a load of fucking shite. I'm sorry, they're corrupt as fuck, the BBC, and they should be closed down for this. Not just this, the story in general, just overall. People are getting sick and tired of their crap and the way they sweep things under the carpet and people get away with everything under the sun. And these fucking people, the, the general public's being forced to pay a TV license that they shouldn't even be paying for because they're already paying an extortionate amount of money for Sky TV, for example, which a lot of people are no longer going to anymore. Excuse me. Because they're sick and tired of paying extortionate prices for these millionaires to become billionaires. And the crap that they put on TV nowadays as well, especially even on terrestrial TV, which is complete and total shit. It, it's just ridiculous. And, and this is my opinion on it. And at the end of the day, if the, man, if the man has got mental health problems and he's getting them addressed, that's fine and dandy. But look at it from my side of it as a parent. About a 17-year-old daughter and some mom daddy was contacting my daughter asking for naked pictures of her. I'm sorry, I'd be kicking his fucking ass. And I'd be taking him to court and I'd be suing the bastard for every penny he has. And I'd be naming shame him and I wouldn't give a shit. I wouldn't give a shit. Because there's too many of these people out there, especially these big time celebrities, getting away with murder now, and getting smacks on the wrist because of their fucking their 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 status as a celebrity. So I'm sorry. It just oh, makes my fucking piss boil. So it does. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> it's just oh man. Oh, even though I still feel like crap out there, just annoys me. It really, really does. Anyway, summer holidays. Yes, guys, it's now in the middle of the summer. And a lot of you have been contacting me and stuff like that there. And I've been asking you over the last couple of weeks, where you've been going to? Holidays, abroad, local holidays, wherever you're going to. And a lot of you get in contact with me. But a lot of people, and this is the thing that's been popping up on the, on the, store, on the news lately as well, you know, about cancelled flights and airports being chock-a-block and the whole stress of the summer holidays and stuff and everybody's always you know wondering you know when they get to the airport is there enough time to get through security how much time do you have to leave it before your flight you know people turn up at the airport with their passports being expired or not enough time on their passport to travel people losing their rag over everything it's just a whole stressful time and most importantly Baggage is another thing too as well, getting your bags through, you know, the security and then getting them onto the plane and then say you get to the other side where you're flying to and say it's left behind or it's forgotten or it's lost or whatever. People go fucking boogaloo. This is the time of year where everybody goes mad and they're all like, yeah, 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 summer holidays is great and all, but it's most stressful. Now I'm due to go on my holiday here very, very soon um, with Brooke and Lewis and Brooke's boyfriend and her friend Grace, which I'm looking forward to. We're going away for nearly a week, a couple of days away, bit of, bit of beach, bit of sunshine, chilling out, bit of family time, get to spend time with Brooke's boyfriend, spend a bit more time with him, get to know him more, and also get to spend time with Brooke's uh, friend, who she's been friends with since fucking God knows what age, Grace, uh, since primary school, um, always had time for Grace, Grace is, 
great kid, so she has no grace for donkey years. Um, so we're all heading away here in a little bit. So we're looking forward to getting away and just switching off. But yes, guys, a lot of you have been talking talk to me about your holidays and stuff. And I read this wee story this morning, which was obviously I want to add to the story. You know, of your summer holidays and stuff. It says a jet two holiday maker ended up <laughs> mixing suitcases for a blunder in the airport. Uh, they returned from the Glasgow airport from Tenerife on the eighth of July, at around one forty-five a.m retrieved what she believed was her suitcase from the conveyor belt but later discovered it didn't belong to her she opened the black snake skin, snake skin suitcase to find out someone else's belonging inside it uh, this is a recent thing that's been going on with airline jet 2 where a lot of suitcases have been mixed up and obviously sent to wrong locations lately and jet 2 are getting hammered by customers everywhere <laughs> That wasn't like doing that, or like if someone has the same suitcases, you need to get the I don't know, say you're going to Spain or France or something, and you wake up and it's uh, like for me, for example, same like a suitcase, and I opened it up, and it's all women's clothes. <laughs> You'd be fucking pissed, wouldn't you? But um, Jet Tour in the news today, they're getting slaughtered by a lot of people saying um, about the whole situation about the holidays and stuff. It is a stressful time, guys, to be honest with you. Holidays can be a fucking stressful time, you know, it's just absolutely. Crazy, you know the airports, for example, are are, are crazy. Um, you know, we just and I were in Stansted Airport last week coming through. We were lucky enough; we weren't in the queues for the crazy flights. We were just in the for local domestic flights, so we were straight through security in a way. But some of the people in them fucking queues were going mad, like going but ballistic. Like, thank God I'm not traveling fucking abroad this year. Anyway, if you are going on holiday this year, enjoy your summer holidays. So you do enjoy your summer holidays. Because it's the time, of, well, even though we're getting shitty about it, but I had a lot of you send me messages from different places across Europe and stuff. And I actually had one there sent to me two weeks ago on Instagram from a, a regular listener to the podcast and his wife and two kids were in Florida. And it was like fucking extortionate heat. So I was not that I wasn't jealous or nothing. Like, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Look who was in the UK this week. Our wee friend. Our wee local car resident from the local car home, Mr. Sleepy Joe Biden. Sleepy Joe. The man who hasn't got a fucking ounce of it between his brains. The man who, in my opinion, should be in a car home, having his fucking nappy changed twice a day, and his catheter bag changed, and also fed his medication. He was over visiting the king, King Charles, and I'm sure you've all probably saw the videos of him when he was walking around with the guards, Walking away off in his own wee fucking world, not knowing what day it was, God love him. Poor wee man was lost. He was like a wee lost soul. It was like when I used to work in the car homes years ago, we used to get the, the residents. That used to, we used to call them escapees, who used to try and escape and dander down the road. And, and like dander, even when their wee minds not started to go, God love them, we used to escape from the home and head down the road. And, you know, used to catch them walking down the carriageway and, and some of them were selling their nightgowns or their jammies or whatever, or half naked even, or whatever, and their wee minds and all started to go, God love them. Uh, God rest most of their wee souls now because they're no longer with us. Um, but yeah, we Sleepy Joe was here and some of the stuff he's been up to this week has just been fucking scandalous. Um, stammering his speeches again, disrespecting the king by walking away off on him as well. Um, you know... He's been raised further questions this week about his fitness for the office. After <laughs> listening to this one here, he mistakenly called Ukrainian president, uh, was it Vladimir Zelensky he called him, but he called him Vladimir Putin. <laughs> so, will, will the government in America put everybody out of their fucking misery and take this man out of office? He, 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 he's not fit. How many times have I said this on this fucking podcast? The man is unfit. He's too old. You know, and these people out there are literally saying, Oh, he's okay. God, God love him. He's all right. No. The man needs to be in a fucking car home. <laughs> he does. Oh, I give up. I really do. But I was just watching this, some of them videos that were being shared on the internet over the last couple of days. Um about, you know, Sleepy Joe and stuff, and the one with, when he was walking up with the guards were with the king, and it was like, he was walking ahead of himself, and I was like, Charles was walking behind him going, uh, is anybody, uh, is this wee cur here to bring him back in again? You know, it's just unbelievable. 
It really is unbelievable. But yeah, he was here this week and again, those videos, I just had to laugh so hard. But anyway, some good news today, guys. Um, for anybody who works in the public sector, uh, millions of public sector workers, including teachers, police and junior doctors, will get a, a pay raise between 5 to 7%. It's been announced today. Um, police, and, uh, police and prison officers will receive a 7% pay raise, while teachers and junior doctors will receive a 65 and 6 point rise, respectfully. Our we met Rishi Sunak, who I think is useless as fucking anything. Uh, the rises will hap- happen. Um, it, it, obviously, with immediate effect, which is great to see. Um, the full list that's been announced today, if you're any of those out there, um, police officers are getting 7%, junior doctors 6%, uh, prison officers 7%, armed forces only 5%, and teachers 6.5%. Um, I think that armed forces should be getting more, and teachers should be getting more having to put up with all the fucking shit they put up with these days as well, which a lot of you have been contacting me about speaking to teachers a lot. I've read a lot of your emails over the last couple of days about teachers, about all this fucking can't say this to kids and can't teach them that because they're easily offended. Snowflake generation and all this crap identifying and all that shit. I've had all guys, some of the messages you've been sending me over the last couple of days, but that's been brilliant, um, which I'm going to read shortly to you. Um, yeah, the uh, the pay raises have been announced this afternoon, which is a good thing, but I think they should get more. So, anyway, on to some news here from Northern Ireland. Now, as you all know, it was the 11th and 12th of July parades yesterday and the day before, and some of you were asking me was I going to be attending them and I said no because I don't go to them anymore because again I explained the reason why a few weeks I think it was a week or two ago on the podcast um, because sometimes I feel that there's like trouble there and stuff like that which is crazy and I was just reading some of the stories through it today and this one here stood out for me and I couldn't believe when I was reading it paramedics were kicked and bitten at 11 July bonfire parade 11 ambulance staff were targeted at four locations three of them uh Bonfire sites over the 11th of July. Listen to this here. Attacks on 11 ambulance staff on the night of the 11th of July and early hours of the 12th of July have been strongly condemned by the Northern Ireland Ambulance Service. The assaults occurred, occurred at four locations, three of them bonfire sites in a six-hour period from late on Tuesday into the early hours of Wednesday. The most serious incident occurred at a bonfire in Carrick, Fergus, County Antrim, involving a member of f- five staff. One person was arrested in connection with another incident in Lisburn. It happened in the Ballymacaish area with further staff assaulted in 4th River Avenue of Belfast and Belfast City Centre. The Northern Ireland Ambulance Service is said to have made a statement about this. Uh, it says here, During the Carrick Fergus, a staff were kicked, punched and bitten, spat at and had threats made on their lives. A student paramedic was also amongst the assaulted in the incident. The Chief Executive from the Northern Ireland Ambulance Service Executive said we will strongly have in the region of 11 to 12 ass- staff assaulted each period, of, uh, sorry, each year during this time, which is of course itself appalling. Overall, last year in Northern Ireland there were 652 ambulance staff attacked in Northern Ireland. But to be so many in such a small space of time is obviously a great concern. It's not for me to speculate on what causes people to behave that way. It's a small minority, but when they do, the impact of staff on our service is very significant. He then goes on uh, to talk about it and saying about obviously what plan they have moving forward and saying the attackers should be ashamed of themselves. Guys, I talked about, I think it was last week's podcast, I talked about this. This is another reason why I don't go to these anymore. And it's not because, you know, because I even had a message on Instagram from somebody saying, oh, you don't go to the band parades anymore and you don't go to the bonfires because you think you're bigger than everybody. I don't think I'm bigger than fucking anybody. I just don't want to go and be surrounded by morons. Like, look at this here, ambulance staff being attacked. Like, what is the fucking sense in it? Like, don't get me wrong, a lot of per, uh, local 11th of July fires in the Bangor area where I live all went off great. There was no issues. I have friends who were at one. And they said they had a great night. I even heard stories that I was reading online over the last couple of days 
that people, even, even people in the Catholic community were helping build some of the bonfires in Belfast, which I thought was fucking great. Bringing the communities closer together, you know, it was great. I even saw a, a, a report this morning, on, 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 I don't know where it was, I think it was YouTube or something, RTE from down south were up doing news reports on the biggest bonfire has been made in history, 210 feet I think it was. And they were there, and, and even on GB News yesterday, they were doing a whole big thing on the parade, and you've seen all the families out and having a great time, and, you know, it was great, and they were asking them why they go out every year to the bands and stuff like that there, but then on the other side of it, you see all these fucking numpties going around, there you go, for example, attacking ambulance staff, you know, just being complete fucking dicks, and it ruins it for everybody else, and what did they get out of it? A criminal record, arrested. Showing off in front of their fucking mates thinking they're Billy Big Bulls. And this is the reason why I don't go to it. And it's not because you think, oh, Mafia doesn't go as he thinks he is. Somebody and all, he doesn't want to go. What a shit. I used to go to bonfires every year when I was a kid. I grew up in Belfast. There was a bonfire right outside my fucking house every year. And even when I grew up still at home here in Bangor, we used to go to the fire every year. And then it got to the stage where it started getting... A little bit feisty, and people were then this new generation of kids were coming along, and then they all started coming out and just using it as an excuse to go out and get pissed and start fights. And now, innocent ambulance staff who are out on call at night just to try and do their job are being attacked, spat on, bitten, and threatened. And all they're doing is their fucking job. And this is the reason why I don't go near them every single year because of that. But for what I saw, on news reports and for what I read online, for what I've seen on social media, most of it turned out good. There was a, a, a pass by, no issues, apart from the occasional, you know, we get the other way you go, the local scumbag who thinks he's Billy Big Balls with a couple of bottles of drink in him, thinks he can bait the fucking word and start fights with everybody. And he either picks a fight with the wrong person, gets his ass kicked, or he picks a fight with the wrong person, gets himself arrested and spends a night in jail, gets smacked in the wrist, and off he goes. But, yeah, reading that there about that almond stuff, it was just fucking crazy. And, again, it's it's so, so sad to read things like that because at the end of the day, I mean, people go out there to try and enjoy themselves, but, again, it's this generation where there's ones out there who just love to go out and pick fights. Oh, it just makes me... Oh, that's why I don't go near it. More Northern Ireland news for you today. People in Northern Ireland now, uh, who were in charge of the country at the time, are now being involved in a, another COVID inquiry. So, um, former First Minister Arlene Foster was interviewed the other day, and also Michelle O'Neill has been interviewed as well. Um, they said obviously there's a whole big investigation going on about you know how the how the the thing was dealt with. Should we do, dealt with it quicker? You know, all the different things that are going on. You've probably heard about it all over the news in the last couple of days about the COVID inquiry and stuff like that. There will now Michelle O'Neill and Arlene Foster have been interviewed as well. Um, now, you know, Michelle O'Neill's turned around saying about, you know, that Northern Ireland were left second base basically comp- over to, compared to the UK. What I saw with my own personal eyes, in my opinion of it was, whenever Bumbling Boris made a fucking decision during lockdown about another lockdown or whatever it was, our boys over here fucking followed suit two or three, four days later, maybe a week later. Because whenever you heard Boris going, uh, we got to stay at home for another three weeks to try and flatten the curve. And I remember turning around to mum and dad at the time, or at the time I was with Sandra, I was like, you know, what are you saying about in our couple of days? Our, them our two fucking clowns from the circus are going to, uh, top of the hill are going to come out and say, oh, well, I think we're going to do a Norway lockdown for another week or two. And that's exactly what fucking happened. They followed suit. Every time. There's a whole big investigation going on at the minute and everybody wants to know and I did say to it that what goes around comes around and these people will be standing in front of a judge and I've always said that for a long, long time. So I have, so... Oh, it's fucking mental. So it is absolutely insane. Right, what else have I got for you today before I go on to some of your questions? Because guys, I just wanted to basically try and, um, you know talk about a few bit, bits and pieces and stuff like that there and then obviously get into uh, some of your questions because a lot of you have been questioning me over the last couple of days in relation to a lot of different things that have been going on in the world right 
Oh, I did have something else on my, I've got my laptop here in front of me today and I have a few things up, but I accidentally shut some of the pages that I'm trying to fucking refind again. Right, this is the other one I have before I go. Telephone, broadband and internet providers. That's what I need to speak to you about. Lost a page on my laptop for flip sake. Now I've got it up here. Now, everybody, is, everybody out there has the internet nowadays, no matter where it goes. Well, apart from my mum and dad, they just use the internet on their phone, well, mum's phone. Mum and dad share the connection. Don't ask, it's a long fucking story. <laughs> Mum and dad still no home broadband, but I will say no more about that. Home broadband and telephone and stuff like that. There. I mean, who really uses a landline nowadays? I don't. I don't even got a landline anymore. All I have in my house is home broadband for work and for the kids and things like that. So, yeah, there's all different options you have out there. You know, from all your big companies like BT and you know, Sky and Virgin and Vodafone and 3 and all these different telephone companies now are all doing broadband and over in the mainland, you've got all these different ones over there too as well and all your different options now of having the internet. But here's the thing, like a home company, the likes of a BT or a Virgin or whatever, offer you a contract to, you know, sign up with them for a service, whether it be broadband, broadband, telephone, most of them have TV services now. Even the likes of Talk Talk and TV and Virgin and BT and Sky and all these different companies and all now have all these different options for you to do home broadband, telephone, etc, etc. But recently, I've even came across people who I've been reading this story this morning, brought up memories for me for even my own brother and different people who were on this network trying to have problems, either getting out of their contract or having problems with the service or being given like a 30 day get out clause at the start of their contract and they messed them about, whatever else. Virgin Media have now been investigated by Telecom's regulator over complaints that it's too difficult for customers to cancel their contracts. Uh, People told Ofcom they struggled to speak to a customer service agent by telephone with some calls being dropped and other facing long waiting times to be answered. I remember actually Tony telling me about that whenever he was speaking with Virgin Media. Others said they have been made to repeat requests to cancel their services. Virgin Media says customers relating to difficult leaving have overhauled this past year or so. Uh, It's the latest in a series of setbacks for the media giant, which has come under fire in recent months over disruption to its services, which again I've heard about. Virgin Media is not even available in my area, for God's sake. Uh, That led to... This past April, when thousands of people across the UK reported they were unable to access the internet twice in one day. That's the thing, when Tony had that service. Now here's the thing, I live in Bangor, so my brother. He, he got it and I can't get it. It's, strange, it's a strange, strange, strange service. In this past June, some of Virgin Media email users were left unable to send or receive emails for 36 hours while this issue was resolved. Some customers still could not access their inbox two week, up to two weeks later as well. Virgin Media were asked whether this dispute to, uh, for emails and has been fully resolved and also their internet services as well. All comes after telecom companies raised their prices substantially in April by Virgin Media telling their customers they face an average of 13.8% increase to their bills. Here's the thing. I know a lot of people in Belfast who have Virgin Media and had it for years. Services, well, pretty quick. But again... <laughs> They've always had problems. You know, trying to get through to someone, trying to get it cancelled, trying to have an issue. I had a friend of mine from Belfast who she had a problem. Her and her husband get in some broadband. I remember, it's been, oh God, many years ago this wasn't I? And they always give you a 30 day, you know, if you're not happy with your service within 30 days, we will, you have a right to cancel your contract, cancel the service, blah, 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 blah. And within a week or two, they rang him up and said, look, listen, this service is crap where I am. It keeps cutting off. It cuts off at like 12 o'clock at night. Um, It's not happening. And I don't like it. So please cancel the contract. Come and get your equipment and take it away. And they were, oh, yeah, no problem. We'll send someone out. No. And then they waited for nearly two weeks. And after the other two weeks was up, they said, oh, no, you're outside your 30 days. And then you're like, whoa, 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 why I rang you on this date, this time, and I answered the call. All your calls should be recorded for training and quality purposes, like most companies do now. Oh, we don't have a record of that call. A load of shit. They ended up having to go into a contract with Virgin, which they didn't want. They ended up disputing it all, and 
I, I don't even know how. I think even went to the small claims court as far as more. This was a long time ago. But again, I've never had any experience with Virgin Media. Um, but there is obviously different options out there. Um, there is rights, obviously, when you, when you have a broadband provider or telephone provider. A lot of people don't even have a landline anymore. I don't have a landline. I have just broadband in my home. Home broadband. But my home broadband is a business broadband because I use it for the likes of uploading videos, my ho- work from home, and, and Lewis is on his PlayStation all the time. Brooke will be on her TV. You know, we watch Netflix and Amazon and all movies and stuff I got there through there. And there's all different things that go on in the house at once. You know, we've got a Google Home thing set up in the house. Brooke's got a wee uh, Alexa thing in her bedroom. I have another Alexa in the kitchen. Just all wee different things are connected. Our phones are connected to the internet. Laptops are connected to the internet. Playstations and everything else. So I up- I upgraded my package recently to business broadband, which is... Brilliant. I don't have any issues with it at all so far. I haven't had any issues with them for a while now. But again, you know, it, you do have options to change there, guys. And um, there is a thing here has been brought out as part of this story. It says, what are my rights for changing my home broadband supplier? So anybody there who's looking to change their broadband and are out of contract or common day contract, this might be of interest to you. If you're near the end of your contract, you should uh, could benefit by switching to a different supplier altogether. Or if you're good at negotiating, you may be able to get down the price of your current deal by calling. That's a little trick I used to do years ago with Sky TV. Look, listen, Virgin Media or Talk Talk are offering me a better deal for Sky Sports or whatever. What? I don't know. Yeah, negotiating piece of piss. I used to do it for a living, and I'm used to it. If you're not out of contract and you're struggling to pay your bill, there's support available. You can arrange a payment plan with your provider or might be able to allow you to switch to a cheaper internet package without paying a penalty fee. There's also a broadband mobile tariffs available which are meant to help people on universal credit and other means tested benefits as well. I didn't know that. Um, Virgin Media Party are one of the suppliers offering a, a social tariff for only £12.50 a month. There's no charges of getting on a social tariff, no fee to leave before the contract expires and the price will increase midway through. This is where they get you as well, guys, as well. you got to remember this. They always say to you, oh, we'll give you uh, this for this price and then after a while it goes up. Or whenever you sign up for a new contract for the first time, they always say to you, oh, your first bill's in two weeks. Uh, I haven't even had a fucking month of the service yet. You're charging me for two weeks. This is where they get you. Especially Sky, they're the worst for it, especially with TV packages. you got to give them 30 days to get out of the contract, and it's a whole big palaver. So it is. So, um, you know, Ofcom's now come out and said they're investigating Virgin Media, um, whether they're, they're dealing with their customers correct or not. So for any Virgin Media customers out there, if you have any issues, let me know about it, and I'll talk about it on the podcast. Um, but yeah, broadbands, you have all your different options now compared to, fuck, do you remember the days when the, the internet first came out? You had all these different issues and problems where it was like dial up and I mean, even when I was at home, we never had broadband because my dad couldn't afford it. Um, but I remember when I first got my first broadband after I moved out and moved in with um, Brooke and Lewis's mum. Uh, tell you a lie, our first house, we only lived together for six months and then we bought our first house well, six months later. We got our first broadband up. It was what was the speed? 54 kilobytes per second. This is fucking atrocious. And it was with Talk Talk. And it was a fucking nightmare. And I remember, sorry, what, was it Talk Talk? No, the first one was with BT. And then the contract expired after a year. And then the second year, it was about a year and a half after I let go over the contract. And the speed was about two or three meg at the time, which was fucking atrocious back then. You think about it, really. Went to Talk Talk. It was shit when Talk Talk first started coming out on the scene. This was around about 2006, going into 2007, early 2007. That's when we we moved to our second house. Two years later, we sold the house and moved on. And it was so funny because when I rang him up, I spoke to this Indian person on the phone. I never forget the phone call. It's just to show you how good my fucking memory is. Um, on the phone, this person saying like, "We're moving house in a week or two." And we're just letting you know we're moving house, so we want to change the address and get the broadband switched to the new house. Oh, it'll be two, two or a month or two before we can get you on, sir. And I went, so obviously if it's going to be a month or two before you can get me on, I'm not paying for the service. Oh, you still have to pay your service. I mean, pay my service for what? You will be paid for two months of internet and not even fucking have it? I don't think so. It ain't going to fucking happen. Goodbye. Stick your contract up your ass. I'm away. 
and I've never been on Talk Talk Broadband ever again. Never in a million years. All our services I've had over the years, the likes of BT, I've had Sky Internet too as well. Um, but again, it's just, it's just sort of fluctuates. It's obviously what's the best deal for me right now and the speed. The company who I'm with at the minute is great and the speed is phenomenal. We get really good fast upload. I can upload a vlog really quickly. I can upload stuff on the internet really, really quickly, especially when I'm doing highlights for football and stuff like that. There. Like a full 10 minute highlight video can take me like not even two minutes to upload, which is incredible. Speed's fantastic. So, so in relation to broadband, guys, um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of different options there, but just be careful whenever you are, you know, choosing who you want to choose as a broadband provider and television. Because at the end of the day, some of these companies out there can like lead you on and make you think to yourself, well, I've got a great deal. And then all of a sudden, you fucking don't, you're hit with a big massive bill. And I will also ask as well. Um, about the, the get out clauses of your contracts and discuss every little detail you can try and be careful because they always have these wee hidden clauses and things like that there and that's why I always sort of like review and research things before I even you know agree to do anything so but anyway before I go into Jackass of the Week this week I'm going to go into some of your questions which a lot of you have been contacting me over the last couple of days guys which I really appreciate Especially with the birthday messages, flip me, guys. I put up in that video on my Instagram um, about the boys giving me the cake and stuff like that there at the football ground last Saturday, and a lot of these were jumping in with your messages, wishing me a happy birthday and saying to me, you know, have a great birthday. And I, guys, you just don't, don't understand how much it means to me, all those messages. So, from my heart, bottom of my heart, sorry, thank you for all the messages once again. I do appreciate all your love and support. But anyway, let's get into some of your questions today before we go to the jackass of the week for this week. I'm going to go to Facebook first of all because I've got two comments on the Facebook page and I've got a, uh, well there's obviously Facebook messages there which I've applied to some of them there yesterday but um, one here first of all from William Montgomery on Facebook. Hello William, how do you think Liverpool are going to get on this year in the Premier League? I was at I was at the match against Harlem with Welders. Okay, you're at the match at the Welders at the weekend. Uh, okay, looking on his profile, he's from Cool Rain. Hello, William. I don't even know why I met you at the weekend, did I? Oh, we look at your profile here and see if I recognise your face. No, I didn't say it. I can't remember. I met a couple of people down there. So, hello, William from Cold Rain. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for the message. I do appreciate it. How do you think Liverpool's going to go on this season? Well, I've heard stories this morning. Yeah. This is fucking crazy. This is morning. Watching the boys back in pre-season training there two days ago, which was great to see them all coming back. And tr somebody got a haircut. Someone got a haircut, or let's say somebody got a haircut. Trent is back to normal. Trent Alexander Arnold got those fucking stupid looking dreadlocks cut off. Never suited them. And he's got them back, and he's back to the old looking Trent. And even the boys, you see him coming in the train, and all the boys, even Robbo, Robinson was like, Oh, yes, thank God, yes, mate, you're back to normal. Great. Um, but then I heard today, and it was on Sky Sports News this morning. At a Saudi Arabian club, the club that Gerard is managing. By the way, yes, Stevie Gerard and Saudi Arabia, crazy. They've offered him four times what he's getting at Liverpool at the minute. And they said it's an estimate of 700 grand a week for Jordan Henderson. He's 30, 32, 33. 700 fucking grand a week to kick a ball in Saudi Arabia. And there's talk that apparently he wants. He's considering the offer, sorry, he's considering the offer of going to Saudi Arabia. Like, what the fuck? It's, it's crazy money. Now, I know, obviously, a lot of Liverpool players out there, and, and the ones are coming towards the end of the run that we were on, like James Milner's away, and Naby Keita's away, and Bobby Firmino's away, and, you know, are we going to lose Henderson too? Our captain, most importantly. Which is, could be a strange one, but... At, at, will he accept the offer? It's a bit of a strange one, like, but seven, a reported 700 fucking grand a week for a play. Anyway, to answer your question, how do you think we're going to do this year? It depends who was signed. I've obviously signed two at the minute. We're looking to bring in a couple more uh, to strengthen the midfield. I've also heard Thiago's on his way too as well. Galatasaray put an offer in for him too as well. I hope... I hope we do a lot better than what we did last season. We have to, because last season was just atrocious. Um, 
But to answer your question, William, I think we'll do all right. We're in the Europa League and all this year, and once I'm not looking forward to spending my Thursday, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to spending my Thursday nights at Anfield instead of Tuesdays or Wednesday nights. Um, but I'm going to them games, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to this season because I have a couple of matches booked already for next season, so I'm looking forward to it. So I am. So yes, it should be fun. A bit interesting season. See how. Uh, so I'm looking off to a good start, William. I think we'll do all right. Hopefully. One more here from Joe. It says, hi, or, hi, can you be so strong? The stuff you've been through uh, makes you a role model. Okay. I would love to talk to you more about it. If you are open up on your platforms, if you open up on your platforms and talk on your platforms like others can do as well. Hmm. It's a bit of an interesting one. Um, yes, Joe, it has been a, quite a stressful time lately, so it has, but um, yeah, I've, I've talked about a few different things here, but not everything. Talked about a few wee things on the on on the uh, on the podcast as well. So on my YouTube channel too. So, but thanks for your message. Let's get into one of your uh, messages from Facebook. Let's have a look here and see. Right, I've one here from Joseph. Joseph says, "Hey Matthew, how you doing? I saw you in Belfast a few months ago. I wanted to approach you and say hi." but I didn't want to disturb your time with your son. I've been a long-time follower of your YouTube channel and was dying to meet you. When I saw you in Belfast City Centre with your son, I got a little bit nervous and I wanted to approach you, but I didn't want to disturb you spending time with your son. Just wanted to let you know that I'm a big fan of all your work and cheer you on with all encouragement as I love watching all your content every single day. Keep up the good work and hopefully next time I will have the courage to come and say hi. Okay, Joseph, you should have come and said hello anyway. For me, Lewis and I would have loved to have met you. Um, thanks for the message, appreciate it. Um, you should have come up and said hello. I, I always say this to people, never, ever, 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 ever think that you can't approach me. Even if I'm having a shitty day, come and approach me. Because that person who approaches me will make me feel better and brighten up my day even more. So thank you, Joseph. And listen, next time you see me, come and say hi. Please do. Please, 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 please. Come and say hi. I'd appreciate it. I really, really, really would. Um, right, here we go. Here, let's see. Uh, right, I'll go on the Instagram now. Here, have a wee quick nosey around uh, Instagram. Da, 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 da. One here from Fergus Johnston. Sent it to me on Monday. Let me reply to him. Apologies. Happy birthday, Matthew. Sorry I'm late. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Obviously, I assume it's family. We will talk more at the next game. Okay, Fergus. Thank you very much for the message. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's go into another one here from Thomas. Thomas. Where is he from? Let's have a look at his profile. Thomas is from... Oh, he's from Glasgow. Hello, Thomas, on Instagram. How are you? Thomas says, hi Matthew, just wanted to know how your trip finished up, sorry, how your trip with your mum and dad finished up as they were in Edinburgh. Hope everything got cleared up with the situation with the hotel you were talking about on the podcast. Edinburgh can be touch and go, but also quite expensive. Hope they had a great time. Don't even get me started on it. <laughs> don't even get me started. <laughs> the team mum bending my ear. We've had to put a whole investigation thing into the situation where... They, I could talk, talked about this a couple of weeks ago when they were in Edinburgh, that, that they ended up having a fucking nightmare. They were put in a, a place that wasn't shown in their booking and there was a whole big mix-up and I've had to contact booking.com and it's been a whole big fucking flab. But apart from that, they enjoyed Edinburgh. They wouldn't be doing as much in Edinburgh as like me and you would probably do because I've heard, I've never been to Edinburgh, but I've heard it's all hills. And mum and uh, dad's like recovering from a heart attack a few months ago and he's still trying to take it a wee bit easy and he's, just doing bit by bit, day by day. And he's just sort of like trying to, you know, enjoy everything as he can. But uh, to answer your question, Thomas, they had an absolute ball. Uh, Mum and Dad said they had a great time and they loved the sights and things they got there. But I think I would probably enjoy Edinburgh more than what they would, to be honest with you. And I even said to him the other day when I was in London uh, last week with Lewis, I said she wouldn't last five minutes from fucking London. 
<laughs> and they were like, why am I too fucking big and too busy? You get lost. I'd be getting phone calls every five minutes. Where am I? I'm lost. <laughs> oh, dear. No, honestly. Um, for what I know, they had a good time apart from the hotel situation. So, absolute nightmare. So they are. So, but that's just mum and dad for you. But thanks for your message. I do appreciate it. Right, let's get on the another one here from... Da, 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 da. Right, I've one here from, is it Namar? Namar, Namar N-A-M-A-R-A. Namar has said to me, Hey Matthew, how are you today, my friend? Another message coming to you here from London. Oh, thank you very much. Just wanted to see if you had a good time while you were away in London last week. I hope to run into you someday as I am a big fan of your YouTube channel. I am from South London and I've been a long time viewer for the last two years. Love the videos from London. Looking forward to your London tour video with Lewis. When are you going to be posting it, my friend? Okay. Well, is it Namar, Namir, whatever your name is? I, I hope I've pronounced that right. Um, yes, I will get it because I've been not too well the last couple of days. I'm going to be putting up my birthday video. Well, birth, I'm going to say birthday video, which is like me and Lewis and fucking Barry's. It's like a montage of Lewis and, and, and the, the arcades and stuff and us in Port Rush and then me getting the birthday cake and things like that. So... And then the London video, the London tour, I'm going to get that up over the weekend, guys, because I need to get it up. Um, it was recorded on my bigger camera for better zoom quality and stuff. So, um, yeah, you all know, guys, I haven't well the last couple of days. I've been quite tired and run down, so I'm going to get that all edited and stuff like that. It won't take too long to put together. It's on for about 20 minutes, but it's a good video. I'm looking forward to putting that up for you guys to see. But, yes, thanks for your message. Is it Namar and Namir? I hope I've got that right. Um, if I haven't got it right, I do apologize. Uh, let's have a look here and see. Do one more here on Instagram. Uh, right, one here from Adam. Adam Campbell. Hello, Adam. How are you? What does he say? He says, Hi, Matthew. Just wanted to drop you a message for your podcast this week. Just wanted to see if there's any other subjects you'll be bringing up on the podcast and, and segments. I know you have Jackass of the Week, which we love and listen to every single week, but is there any other segments you were thinking about maybe bringing into the program? Let us know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Okay. I have been writing down a few ideas, like different segments and stuff and whatnot, but again, this is where I leave it up to you guys, where I keep asking you, what would you like to hear any type of segment you'd love to hear me do or like a top 10 or I don't know, we've got Jackass of the Week or we could be Hero of the Week or, you know, whatever you want to do. You know, I want to hear you guys, like different things you want to hear on this podcast. A lot of you just prefer to hear me sit and talk shit for every fucking like 10 hour and 20 minutes every episode or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, this is your, this is, I do this podcast for you guys. So whatever you'd like to hear. Or see, then please let me know. Um, so I'd love to hear from you. Right, I'll go into the emails here. More Army Podcast at yahoo.com. Yahoo. Right. Oh, this, this, this podcast is making me feel a bit better. I'm still a bit tired. I think I'm going to need more coffee later on at some point. Okay, here we go. One here from Stephen. Stephen writes to me on the on the. I don't know why my, my Google Home people in the background there. I'm sure you probably heard when we Google Home people in the background there. <laughs> Stephen has wrote to me saying, Hi Matthew, happy belated birthday. Hope you had a great weekend away for your birthday. Enjoyed your vlogs um, when you were away with your son over the weekend. It seemed good fun. I uh, hope you had a great birthday. What type of presents did you get this year? Anything nice and different than normal? Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Okay, it's a bit strange way to ask that. Or should we let me know what you got wouldn't that be i don't know anyway thank you for your, your email yes i did get some presents mom and dad bought me lovely aftershave um what else did i get for my birthday i got more aftershave i got <laughs> some, <laughs> i got bought a bottle of sambuca <laughs> i know crazy um i got taken out for dinner um what else did i get that's pretty much it I don't get very much. Guys, I, I, here's the thing about birthdays. I don't really sort of like celebrate birthdays as much as what I used to. You know what I mean? I, I've never really been, been really a big birthday person, you know, because I've told this story before and I'm not trying to be soppy or nothing about it. Like, but my 16th birthday, I worked. Um, 
my 18th birthday, I worked, I think I worked night shift that night, I did. Did I work night shift? Or did I work an all-day shift? No, I worked a 13-hour shift that day in my job in the car home. And on my 21st birthday, I worked night shift. My 30th birthday, I had a bit of a thing with my wrestling buddies when I used to do the wrestling back in the day. Mum and Dad and my ex-wife put like a wee sort of couple of friends around the house and that was it. I had, I had a wee drink whenever that was about it. Nothing special. If you watch my vlogs, you'll see in my 40th, I went for a walk up the, uh, the stairway to heaven thing here in Northern Ireland, done that for my 40th birthday. And then I came home and sat in the house. Me and Tony went out for a couple of drinks with his friend Daniel, didn't do very much of that either. And then this year I worked on my birthday. So I don't really, you know, next year's my, my nor eight years to go and I'll be 50. Whoop, whoop. If, I, if I make it that far. <laughs> um... It, it's just birthdays have always been like made just a normal day to me, to be honest. Um, you know, it's one of those things. But uh, yeah, thanks for your message. I did get some nice presents for out there, so I do obviously uh, appreciate all the gifts that I got. Lovely aftershaves I got. Lovely aftershave from mum and dad. And then I got an hour aftershave as well. Um, and then I got a bottle of some book and taken out from a dinner. And also, I, I, I'm happy enough with that. If someone had made, made me a dinner or handed me a card, I'm chuffed. I'm over the moon. <laughs> Seriously, over the moon. So, there you are. Right, guys, I want to go and get here and get on to the favourite segment of the week that we all love. I've actually missed this guy. So, I have since last week. Didn't get to do him last week because it wasn't no podcast last Thursday. But anyway, yes, it's night time for the segment that we all love. It's night time for the Moor Army podcast. Jackass of the week segment. <laughs> there he is. Who bundle and bo- Boris the fucking donkey. <laughs> there's, no, there's, very, there's very little consideration for this week's podcast. Who Jack asked the week's going to be this week? We all know who it's going to be. There's no consideration at all. So anyway, after very little consideration, and a lot of you contacted me more than you know, and, and what the time is that word now? I, but anyway. A lot of these were contacting me about this and saying this would be the Jackass of the Week this week, which is true. The Moor Army Podcast, Jackass of the Week for this week, please. Can I get a drum roll, please? Thank you very much. The Moor Army, Jack- Moor Army Podcast, sorry, Jackass of the Week for this week is the BBC. Well, that's right. The British Bison Corporation. For all their ways they handled this situation in relation to the BBC presenter being accused of the all the stuff that's been going on over the last couple of days and the way they handled it, the way it took them seven weeks to announce it and investigate it and whatever else and just overall the way they handled the whole situation. So the jackass of the week for this week is our good old friends at the BBC. Yes, they are the jackasses of the week for this week. So there you go. Right guys, I'm going to go because I've been yambling on here for quite a while now. And, and you get this podcast put together and get it out. And I got a couple of our vlogs to edit today as well. I'm going to get an hour coffee. I'm going to get a shave and a shower and pick my ass up and get moving for and try and get myself back to normal. Um, hopefully, I feel a bit better over the weekend because I got football matches coming up at the weekend. Uh, we're playing Linfield this weekend. If you're about Belfast this weekend, guys, you want to call and watch a bit of pre season football. Danny Blanc's Flower Stadium this weekend at three o'clock. We are playing Linfield. Um, at three o'clock, the Premiership side, big, one of the biggest clubs in the world, Linfield. They have won the most league titles in the world of any club. We're playing them on Saturday. Um, what else am up to this weekend? Um, actually, it'll be an interesting day on Sunday. I'm off out with Dad on Sunday. Dad's car is going for an MOT, so I might take Dad out for a wee coffee on Sunday and have a bit of a catch up with Dad. Um, stay tuned to the YouTube channel, guys, over there. The coming days, the Mirror Army YouTube channel. Please hit subscribe on that channel. I would appreciate it. And also on this channel as well, if you're listening to this podcast on YouTube as well, please drop a subscribe on it. I would appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be dropping the London video this weekend. I'm also going to be dropping the video that I recorded um, with my birthday. And i got a couple more as well. Um, where vlogs have been recorded over the last couple of days, so stay tuned for those coming up on the channel as well. Right, guys, hope you all have a great weekend. And don't forget to go on to our website for all your podcasts and all the previous videos get yourself some merchandise as well for the summer moorarmy.co.uk i would appreciate it guys right until tuesday 
I will see you back here for another podcast that I open up to over the weekend and talk about all the other stuff that's been going on in the world. And until then, guys, I will see you all then. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. Most importantly, stay away from those oil protesters. <laughs> I'm joking. Till Tuesday, guys. Have a good weekend. And I'll see you all then. Thanks for listening.